come because the company is good, food is great, the t-shirts are going to be super, uh, the uh, champagne and caviar I understand is still not here yet. <laughs> so, yeah, right? but, but I think we have other stuff. So. Um, the last time I think we ended on... Right? I think we ended on the Africans, is that right? Is that the last one we did? Uh, I just uh, found this picture of this, this uh, three-year-old female apparently that, uh, that they found out that it's really offerences. Uh, but just to show you that, uh, how complete some of the skeletal material is. Okay, see, so we've done Africana. Right, we've been Raymond Dark. Pardon? No, we didn't? Okay, let's, let's do uh, Australopithecus Africanus. This was really the first fossil in South Africa that was found. Um, in the 1920s. There was a bright-eyed and bushy-tailed young PhD named Raymond Dark, who was South African, and he was interested in human evolution. He had just taken a uh, course of anatomy. He was essentially an anatomist. He uh, got a job in South Africa and was interested in whatever he could find. Um, they're, they were doing some blasting in a limestone pit, and they were coming out with this, with these bones of a lot of um, And so he asked the people there if they, could, if they found bones of monkeys, etc., to please let him know, and he would be happy to pay them for, for them. And they did, and uh, one day they had a delicate process of removing limestone with dynamite. Uh, that's the way you always want to get your fossils. Right? Blast them right out. Um, uh, there was the skull of a, an individual that didn't look like the monkeys. That was, in essence, a small boy. Well, <coughs> Africanus groups are from South and East Africa, but mostly South Africa. They are very close to Homohopolis, not quite, and we have one more <coughs> species to talk about before we get to Homohopolis. Um, but it leads, leads, uh, needs a little imagination to see that this might lead to uh, the genus Homo. Uh, this was really the first of the fossils found, uh, again, in South Africa. Raymond, this is uh, the bright-eyed and bushy-tailed scientist going over the skull itself. Uh, Raymond Dart. <coughs> he committed a number of cardinal sins. He, first of all, chipped the matrix away from the bone. Instead of sending the whole thing to London, the proper authorities could do the right thing. He also analyzed it, which was the second cardinal sin, without sending it to London and having the proper authorities analyze it for five or six years. Uh, and third, he wrote an article almost within weeks of finishing chipping the skull out of the matrix and sending it off, and that was another article. Strike three. At any rate, Nature did publish the article, uh, and this is a small child that he found. Uh, this is a small skull. Number one, we had a very old, although at that time, it was an undated fossil. It had teeth that were kind of like early Homo. And it was Raymond Magnum was pointing downward. So that meant that the child was bipedal. Third, the brain was not too big, but it was uh, what you would expect was something that was quite old. <coughs> If we'll reconstruct the whole thing, this is probably what the child looked like. Something like that. Big skull, rounded out, uh, and muscles, <coughs> uh, etc. And with skin and so forth. 
Dark finding it, we knew that we didn't believe it. <coughs> there are two last things to talk about. Now, in paleontology, we have two major schools of thought in terms of naming these things. One is called lumpers, and I'm one of those. I like to put together uh, a lot of the fossils. Uh, into one major category. Uh, and there's splitters. And the splitters like to have a new species every time they find a different fossil. They find a new tooth, there's a new species. Uh, kind of ridiculous in my, in my view. I like fewer, fewer taxa. In the long run, you can only tell <coughs> generic differences, that is, differences at the genus level. But differences at the species level are a little, little, little ridiculous. Well, let's look at Australia flipping a star here. Uh, this is not quite as uh, it's contemporary with Africanus. <coughs> this is what the skull looks like. Uh, with reconstruction, there's one of the skulls that we found. Notice once again, the canine is not present. The back of the skull is one. <coughs> There are brow ridges forming, which will become much more important than uh, Homo erectus. Notice how wide this skull is. The skull at the top, uh, it, it blossoms out into uh, to the side in a, in a uh, much more serious way than its previous ones. If we look at the dead old arch, we still have a situation in which it's parallel. Chimp, this is Murphy, this is modern. And notice the modern has this, this uh, uh, single arch. <coughs> this still has large teeth, uh, doesn't quite have the arch, it still has parallel <coughs> nose. 